What up everybody? As I transition from 4th Season 2 to Raising Canaan Season 3, I wanted to do a crossover video talking about the young menaces from the Power Universe, Tariq, Kanan, and d -Mac. And ask the question, which minor caused the most mess? Because ever since the 4th Season 2 finale, I've been hearing a lot of d -Mac hate Talking about he's too reckless, he makes bad decision, and he gonna get himself killed type talk. So because of that, I felt like some of y'all needed a power refresher video comparing D-Mac to Young Kanan and Tariq to see who created the biggest mess as a kid. For Tariq, I'll talk about him through OG Power and Stop at the Book 2 timeline. But I'm starting off with Kanan because in my personal opinion, he created the biggest mess. Also, the difference between D-Mac and Tariq and Kanan is D-Mac grew up in the streets with no family. While Kanan and Tariq both grew up with drug dealers for parents who tried their best to shield them from the life. They both even had mothers who accepted them for who they were and taught them the game. And they also both grew up being lied to. The funny thing is, in my personal opinion, young Kanan was the softest out of the three. And that is crazy to believe seeing how he turned out. So when you think of the monster Kanan Stark grew up to be, you got to wonder what D-Mac and Tariq will be like fully grown if they live that long. But young Kanan started messing up from episode one of Raising Kanan. His boys had heard his classmate, a kid named Buck 20, who Kanan didn't like because he had a crush on his girl, Davina, was posting up on Rock's Corners. But what Kanan didn't know was that wasn't Rock's Corner anymore. Her and Unique had made a new agreement splitting up territory. But Kanan and his boy D Wiz shot Buck 20 anyway. This calls Rock. To have to give up all her corners to Unique. It also put a target on Kanan's back. So his mom had to have his boy D-Wiz killed to put Buck 20's body on him. Because of this, Rock put Kanan at the stash house to keep him out the streets. But he messed that up also. He met up with his crush Davina outside the stash house. Either though he was warned by Scrappy. He told Scrappy, she's not even in the game. When Scrappy muttered, everyone's in the game. And it served to be true, as Unique was able to get this information out of Davina by offering to send her mother to rehab. And the stash got robbed. Then to make matters worse, Kanan went and fought Scrappy, thinking Scrappy was the one who got the stash robbed. And it was also around this time that Marvin and Kanan started selling crack at a gas station. Until one of the days, one of the guys they were working with supposedly had something to make the crack better. So Kanan said he was cooking and went heavy on the cut. The problem was, whatever he was cooking the crack with had the base heads dropping dead. And I think around seven people, maybe even more, ended up dying from the bag crack, including Jukebox's girlfriend, Nicole. Season 2, Kanan actually started stepping up and didn't make as many mistakes. But in Season 2, we started seeing him acting more scandalous and stealing from his own family. First, he stole a band of money from out the closet, then stole bags of red caps two different times. Getting me to Tariq St. Patrick, who also did his share of messing up. Some may say he caused even more problems than Kanan, and I wouldn't be mad at that. But Kanan putting out that bad crack put him at the number one spot for me. And if he didn't have a dad for a cop, he would be gone right now. Before I talk about Tariq, keep in mind what Kanan told Ghost about Tariq. He's a born gangster. He's born gangster. It's in him. Then he said Tariq was the coldest kid he ever met. And Ghost was the meanest kid Kanan ever met. So either though Tariq was raised in a penthouse and not in the streets like D-Mac, it didn't matter. It was already in him. And a lot of people blame Kanan for Tariq. But keep in mind that Tariq was already causing problems before he ever met Kanan. 
Before Tariq ever met Kanan, he already stole Angela's gun and brought it to school and had also already been suspended from school for fighting. So all Kanan came and did really was groom what was already there. But then Tariq met Kanan, started drinking lean and lying to his parents about who he was hanging out with. He was also skipping school and hitting licks on his classmates' parents with Kanan and his crew. Then because of Tariq's relationship with Kanan, he got himself kidnapped by Jukebox and held for ransom. And if it wasn't for Kanan, he would have gotten both him and Ghost killed that night. But that wasn't enough to give Tariq second thoughts though. He then went to hit licks with Brains in Big Country and said Brains name during the lick which got a lady killed. And because of this, Ray Ray came looking for Tariq and Raina got killed. After Raina was killed, instead of killing ghosts and letting him and Tommy handle it, Tariq stole Tasha's registered gun and killed Ray Ray himself, creating a problem that would last for the rest of the series and honestly could pop back up again at any time. But this still wasn't enough to get young Reek to slow down. He then went to Stansfield and got into the drug game. Then once he got a taste of the drug game, he set up Kanan to be killed so he could steal the rest of his product without having to pay for it. But this only created more problems because Kanan was Reek's only plug. But Reek knew a plug, his uncle Tommy. So Reek broke into Tommy's warehouse and stole a backpack full of pills from the warehouse. But once Tommy came and took the product back, not even knowing it was stolen from him at the time, Reek made fake pills which he sold to Vincent Ragney and the Italian mob. And this got him kidnapped again. But when he was kidnapped by Vincent, he thought he could work an angle to get a cut of the ransom money. Tariq was also expelled from Stansfield around this time for selling fake pills. But all this still wasn't enough to keep Tariq out the game. Like Kanan said, he's born gangster. After he was expelled from Stansfield, later on in season 6, he helped Tommy take out Proctor. Then tried setting up Tommy to die at the hands of Vincent and the Italian Mafia. Something Tommy still doesn't know about because he canceled Christmas on Vincent before Vincent could tell him. Then Tariq shot and possibly killed his own father, Ghost. I say possibly killed because they never showed us Ghost's body. And they had five whole episodes after he was shot to do so, if he was actually dead. Getting me to D-Mac. So after all the mess Kanan and Tariq calls, D-Mac don't seem like near as much of a problem. D-Mac started off for season one shooting up his dad and granddad's jazz club. D-Mac was doing this out of resentment and trying to get JP's attention because JP abandoned him as a kid and didn't even know it was his own son shooting up the bar. Then D-Mac took a brick of Dahlia from Tommy and took it to Gary, Indiana to make a connect with Cousin Buddy. When Jannard heard D-Mac cut him out of Gary, he retaliated and D-Mac got shot. Once D-Mac got to feeling better, he went to Diamond's Barbershop to get a lineup, only to find Seamus holding Tommy and Diamond at gunpoint. So he killed Seamus. After killing Seamus, D-Mac was told to stay at home and lay low. But he was right back out in the streets the next day. So Tommy sent D-Mac to military camp, where D-Mac eventually assaulted a kid and escaped. Then when he got home to try to get back in favor with Diamond, he killed Mad Dog. King Kilo, leader of the RD's nephew, then took a picture of him and went to show it to Diamond. But somebody saw D-Mac, which caused Jannard to offer D-Mac as a peace offering to Kilo. Let me know what similarities and differences you see between these three characters in the comments. Like Kanan said, I definitely think Tariq is the coldest and the most calculated. D-Mac has the most street smart at that age. Obviously being the only one who grew up in the streets. Think about how quick he took out Mad Dog. One to the chest, one to the dome. Rock definitely would have been proud. Tariq's first kill, he'd even know how to hold the gun right. And Howard told Rock that Kanan can't shoot for 
And in my opinion, out of the three, Kanan was the one who was the least naturally built for the game. Howard and Symphony both tried telling Rock that Kanan wasn't cut out for the life. And Rock probably also knows it herself. But since everyone thinks Defcon is Kanan's daddy and his mom is a queen pin and his uncles are also drug dealers, it's like he had the pressure to get in the game whether he truly wanted that for his life or not. Think about his son Sean, who didn't have the same pressure as a kid to get into the life compared to Tariq. And there you have it. Leave your thoughts, theories, and predictions in the comments.